Imagine standing in a blazing desert, nothing but sand for miles, and then you see it. A silver-blue spear stabbing into the clouds? That's the Burj Khalifa, Earth's tallest building. But its real magic isn't in the height, it's in the shimmering glass armor that defies heat, gravity, and the desert itself. Let's rewind for a second, though. This skyscraper didn't just pop out of the ground, it was born from one country's ridiculously ambitious dream. In the early 2000s, Dubai was on a mission, transformed from a sleepy desert outpost into the world's most dazzling destination. Oil wouldn't last forever, and the city's ruler wanted something that would scream innovation, power, and possibility. So they came up with an idea that sounded borderline insane. Build the tallest structure humanity had ever attempted. And not just tall, the beautiful too. Construction kicked off in 2004, and by the time the doors opened in 2010, the world had a new record breaker. At 2,717 feet and 163 floors, the Burj Khalifa wasn't just tall and it was history making, but its size wasn't the hardest problem to solve. Dressing it was, because how do you clothe a building that size in a place where the summer heat regularly hits 50 degrees Celsius, 122 degrees Fahrenheit? The answer was not ordinary glass. Each panel had to check a long list of boxes, block out brutal sunlight, keep interiors cool, let in enough daylight, and still be crystal clear for those jaw-dropping views of the Persian Gulf. And they had to make 26,000 of them, that's enough glass to cover five football fields. But making glass like that isn't a simple melt some sand and pour it situation. It's a science meets art operation, a recipe as closely guarded as the formula for Coca-Cola. The starting point? Sand, not just any sand though, ultra pure quartz sand mixed with soda ash and limestone. The exact proportions? Top secret. Once combined, the mix is fed into a furnace the size of a small house, where it's blasted with over 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit of heat. Inside, the powdery mixture transforms into a molten, glowing orange river, thick, heavy, and dangerously hot. Now comes one of the coolest parts, literally and figuratively. The molten glass is poured onto a pool of liquid tin in a process called float glass manufacturing. Because glass is lighter than tin, it spreads out across the surface like oil on water, forming a perfectly flat sheet without bubbles or distortions. It's mesmerizing, like watching lava glide across a mirror. But if you let that glass cool too quickly, it would shatter from the internal stress. So. It slowly cooled in a long tunnel, a process known as annealing. Step by step, the fiery river solidifies into smooth, transparent sheets ready for the next transformation. But ready is relative, because we're still miles away from Burj Khalifa quality. Next, those sheets head into a vacuum chamber, where they undergo magnetron sputtering, which sounds like a sci-fi weapon but is actually an ultra-precise coating process. Here, atoms of silver and other metals are literally shot onto the glass layer by layer. These coatings are so thin, measured in nanometers, that they're invisible to the naked eye, but they make all the difference. They reflect infrared radiation, block ultraviolet rays, and drastically cut down the heat sneaking into the building while still letting in natural light. The result? A panel that acts like sunglasses, sunscreen, and a force field all at once. But we're not done yet. That glass now gets tempered, reheated to about 1,150 degrees Fahrenheit, and then blasted with cold air. The sudden temperature shock compresses the surface and strengthens the panel, making it up to five times stronger than standard glass. If it does break, it crumbles into tiny blunt pieces instead of deadly shards. And finally, the sandwich is assembled. Two layers of glass, one with a special coating, one laminated for safety, are sealed together with a spacer in between, forming an airtight cavity. That cavity isn't just empty space, it's a thermal barrier, adding another layer of insulation, 
The result is what's known as an insulated glass unit, the high-tech skin that keeps the Burj Khalifa habitable. But making the glass is just half the battle. Getting it onto the building is another epic story. Each panel weighs hundreds of pounds, and there are thousands of them. Specialized cranes lifted them into place while teams of workers, often hanging hundreds of feet above the ground, secured them with surgical precision. One slip at that height could mean disaster. Over 12,000 workers and 22 million man-hours went into assembling the tower's shimmering armor. And it's not just about looks or comfort. That glass does something incredibly clever. It collects water. In Dubai's hot, humid climate, condensation naturally forms on the panels. Instead of wasting it, the building's engineers designed a system to capture and channel it into a reservoir. Every year, this system harvests roughly 15 million gallons of water, enough to fill a small lake, which is then used to water the surrounding landscaping. In other words, the glass isn't just protecting the building, it's literally helping it live. The Burj Khalifa's design itself plays into this brilliance. Its Y-shaped floor plan, inspired by a desert flower, isn't just pretty, it improves stability and reduces wind resistance. Every curve, every surface, every panel is part of a larger equation, how to build something that shouldn't be possible and make it not only stand but thrive. At this point, it's worth stepping back to appreciate just how massive this achievement is. Think about it. Glass, something humans have been making for thousands of years, does, has evolved from crude windows and simple bottles into a material so advanced it can insulate skyscrapers, control solar energy, and even harvest water. And that's the magic of engineering. It takes something ordinary and turns it into something extraordinary. This idea of taking raw, messy, natural materials um, and transforming them into something with purpose is bigger than glass. It's the same principle that powers the industries that run our world. Take oil refining, for example. At first glance, it might seem completely unrelated, but look closer and you'll notice the same dance of fire, chemistry, and precision. Deep in Texas, there's a refinery that transforms crude oil thick, dirty, and useless into the gasoline that powers cars and planes. It's a process that starts with massive shipments of crude being pumped into storage tanks, then heated, distilled, cracked, and blended, until what comes out the other side is a carefully engineered product. Just like with glass, it's not about the raw material, it's about the science that turns it into something extraordinary. The parallels are striking. Sand becomes glass, crude becomes fuel, and both processes involve mind-bending levels of engineering control and creativity. They both remind us that the marvels of our modern world, from the screen you're watching this on to the skyscrapers redefining city skylines, are built not from magic, but from mastery. When you stop and think about it, every shimmering panel of the Burj Khalifa tells a story far deeper than just glass and steel. It's a reminder of what happens when humanity refuses to accept limits. The challenges of the desert weren't obstacles, they were design problems waiting for solutions. And the result is more than just a skyscraper, it's a piece of living technology. That technology starts doing its job the moment sunlight hits the surface. Instead of scorching the interiors like a greenhouse, the coated glass reflects and filters the light, letting in brightness while keeping the heat out. Inside, the temperature stays stable and cool, no matter how merciless the desert sun becomes. And while it does all this heavy lifting, the view remains crystal clear, as if the building were wrapped in air, not glass. That's the kind of detail most people will never think about while sipping coffee on the 140th floor, but it's the reason they're able to sit there comfortably in the first place. And yet this isn't just a triumph of engineering, it's also a triumph of logistics and teamwork. Producing more than 26,000 precision-made panels is one thing. Transporting them, hoisting them hundreds of feet into the air and fitting them together like pieces of a giant jigsaw puzzle is another challenge entirely. Each panel weighs hundreds of pounds, 
and even a millimeter of misalignment could spell disaster. On site, thousands of workers operated in perfect choreography, guiding glass into place while dangling from cranes high above the ground. It wasn't just construction, it was an aerial ballet. But the real genius of the Burj Khalifa's glass armor is that it doesn't stop working once installed, it actively interacts with its environment. Every day, as humid air brushes against those massive panels, tiny droplets of condensation form on the surface. Instead of letting that water evaporate and disappear, the building collects it, channeling millions of gallons into storage tanks below. That water is then used to keep the surrounding gardens and landscape alive, turning a hostile desert into a green oasis. Its sustainability is woven directly into the skin of the building. And it's one of those details that make you realize this project was never just about breaking records. It was about rewriting the rules of what a skyscraper could be. This philosophy, transforming raw elements into something more, isn't unique to glass making. You see it in the way crude oil is refined into gasoline, jet fuel, and the materials that power the modern world. It's the same principle, just expressed in different ways. Think of the sand that became glass, the glass that became armor, and the armor that now stands as a beacon of possibility. Because at the end of the day, that's what this story is really about. Our relentless drive to turn the impossible into reality. And if you're the kind of person who loves uncovering the hidden stories behind the world's greatest creations, stick around, there's a lot more to explore, from the materials that shape our cities to the inventions that power our future. Hit that follow so you don't miss the next deep dive into the fascinating ways we humans keep redefining what's possible.